Hey guys, I've been in the new shop for about a year and I've been dying to get flood coolant set up again. So uh, I finally got it mostly finished and I thought I'd show you what I've been up to. So I had flood coolant when the shop was in the basement and the enclosure was made out of white shower curtains held up by a frame of PVC. And there were a few things about that system I didn't like. And then a few years ago when I moved the shop into the garage, I pretty much threw that whole system away. Coincidentally, that's about the time I stopped using all my tools. Uh, but now that I'm in the new shop, I've just uh, been making a mess, so I really wanted to get flood coolant set back up again. And this time I went with corrugated white plastic. You can buy this in 4 by 8 sheets at Home Depot, and I can't remember what I paid, 20 or 25 bucks a sheet. And uh, you can just score it with a razor knife and then bend it, and then I screwed it to the inside of the pan, and it seems to be working totally fine. Uh, let's see, let me show you some of the other stuff. So I was using that Coolrite 2290, um, but I only had about an inch of it left in the gallon jug, and I couldn't seem to get another gallon of it. So I went with this AlphaSol 190, which apparently is exactly the same stuff. So right now I've got six gallons of tap water plus 56 ounces of AlphaSol down in the sump. The sump is just a tote like it was before, and the sump pump is the same Harbor Freight sump pump I was using in the old system. I'll put a link to a playlist or a video up in the top right here. Uh, if you want to go look at the old system and then for a drain i'm using this six inch piece of abs it's about two feet tall and inside of it is a filter sock uh, it's got a, a metal ring around the top and then the sock diameter is five inches and it's also about two feet tall uh, i picked that up from mcmaster i, I want to say they're around 15 dollars, and i bought several of them when i built my old flood coolant system and never used them so i thought i'd finally put those to use and then you can see i made a sheet metal funnel to go from the pan down to the sump and it's wired in place temporarily because my bracket system ended up not working out and I haven't redesigned it yet. Uh, let me bring you inside the pan. I changed the drain. There used to be a sink drain right here, but I hated how quickly it would pack full of chips. So what I did was I cut a 4x11 rectangular slot and then I 3D printed this flange in two pieces, uh, this half and then half over here. And then I uh, fiberglassed and epoxied them together and flush into the bottom of the pan. So that seems to be working pretty well. For the pre-filter, I'm using hardware cloth. This is about quarter inch spacing, maybe three sixteenths. And there's two sheets of that. And then in between is just screen door, like the nylon window screen stuff. And so this seems to be working pretty good. It's not great. Um, it's still a little bit... Uh, restrictive and I'll show you why in just a minute or I'll show you that it is in just a second uh, over here is the plumbing it's just PVC again and there's a valve uh, you can see it's not turned up all the way because it <laughs> turns out it's uh, still too much volume and then that goes into this manifold that I have made this week and I'll roll in some footage at the end of the video of me making that and then I've got four lock line nozzles and I went with four because Sam has four on his precision Matthews and I didn't want to be outdone uh, I want the Grizzly to be as, you know, have as many nozzles as the Precision Matthew. So there you go, Sam. I was originally running quarter inch uh, tips on the nozzles, but it was still just too much volume uh, for the amount of pressure. So I've gone down to an eighth inch, and uh, I think I like that as a compromise. I've also got 16th inch nozzles, so I could step it down one more time. I don't think I will. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, out here. Uh, this isn't finished, but this is going to be for my uh, wash down hose. Uh, there'll be an adapter here and then some uh, Flexzilla garden hose, like five feet. And then that'll just go to a sprayer. And I wanted it outside. I had it inside in my last enclosure. And I remember, I don't remember exactly why I didn't like it, but I remember that I didn't like it. So this time I did it on the outside and I'm sure it'll make a giant dripping mess down here on the floor. Uh, let me pause here real quick and I'll set this up and turn it on and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so we're back, and this is pretty much what I was looking for. Uh, I'll turn it up here in just a second and show you how much volume it can put out. But I really like the multiple nozzles just because I think it's going to help get chips out from either side of the cutter, which always seems to be an issue. So let me reach back here and turn this up all the way, and you can see what, what we're dealing with. Uh, at this level, it outruns my filter, and I also seem to get a lot of foaming. I'm not really... 100% sure why that is. It might just be because some pumps are not designed for this application. But I leave it about like that. That's at about two thirds. And so far I've been pretty happy with it. I've done quite a bit of machining with it already. I think that's gonna be it for now. So I'll go ahead and roll in that other footage and see you guys in the next video.